So, your company got hit by a ransomware. Should you go ahead and pay the ransom to restore your systems? Or should you halt operations and build your company from the ashes? So let's lay down the board and simulate the actual decision-making process. You see here, you are not just only a viewer. You're basically uh, someone who has a fiduciary duty to protect the company. So we have here basically two primary door to walk through. The first one is pay the ransom, restore your systems, or the other option is to halt down or shut down the operations and build everything just from the ashes, from the most recent healthy backups of your systems. So what you're gonna do, it looks like a binary choice here, right? However, basically, whatever you decide, you're gonna lose something massive. The question here is how to lose the least. So let's look at first the number one, which is basically paying the ransom. Well, during the first hour of the crisis, the CEO and the CFO, they feel like this is the uh, decision that makes the more sense. Why? B uh, because basically it looks like a business transaction in the modern age. You pay the attackers $15 million, you receive the magic decryptor tool, and you restore your business operations like nothing happened, except you lost $15 million and maybe you lost reputation. But as a board, we need to dissect the reality of this transaction. You see, the first reality check here, you re you're dealing with cyber criminals. There is absolute zero guarantee that the decryptor that it will send you will work. We frequently see decryptors that are buggy, slow, or corrupt the databases they're supposed to save. You might pay $15 million and still have to rebuild your systems manually. Second, there are legal reper repercussions or maybe legal peril to this decision. So basically, if you are a US entity or have US exposure, you must consider what is called the OFAC, which is the Office of Foreign Assets Control in the US. Paying someone on the sanctions list, meaning that you could you have traded a technical crisis for a crisis with the Department of Justice. And three, the double extortion. So basically, recent malware uh, ransomware samples, uh, such, such as those who uh, which deploy the ransomware as a service, they basically act on uh, double in, in two phases. The first phase is they, the, the sample or the ransomware extorts the data on your PC or on your network, and then it implements the decryption, the encryption. So basically what happens, even if you pay uh, the uh, attackers, they actually, they already have stolen your data. So even if they actually give you the key, they still stole your data, okay? And maybe they will come back in two weeks and demand another $10 million not to leak your intellectual uh, uh, properties or maybe leak your internal emails with the press. Let's have a look at this case study, the Colonial Pipeline in May 2021. Darkside ransomware hit their IT network. So basically, Colonial took their uh, operational technology pipeline network offline, proactively to contain the threat. The east coast of the US suddenly faced gas shortages. Colonial CEO made the call instead to pay approximately 4.4 million in Bitcoin. All right, now considering that door number one is not an option, what about door number two? So in door number two, basically, uh, we see this as the moral high ground. We refuse to negotiate with cyber criminals. Maybe your uh, CISO will basically uh, get motivated for this. Yeah, we're not gonna pay these criminals. FBI might push you for this, but what will happen if you do not pay? However, as a board member, you need to understand what does rebuild from uh, healthy backups mean? Most of the time, it doesn't mean rolling back to yesterday's backup and grabbing a coffee like nothing happened. So usually because, uh, you know, attackers, before they encrypt your systems, they have already compromised your network and probably they were 60 plus days in your network before you noticed something wrong uh, in your system and you found your files encrypted. So the attackers are already in and maybe you don't have backups uh, that uh, go back in time uh, 60 plus days, right? So what are you going to do in this case? By not paying means you're accepting total operational paralysis for weeks, perhaps a month. Can your business survive without revenue for six weeks? Can you make payroll? What are your contractual service level agreements with your clients? So the moment you choose not to pay, the breach litigation here clock starts ticking faster. Your stock price uh, will arise in the uncertainty of recovery time. So the gold standard example here I'm going to talk about is the Norsk Hydro in 2019. Norsk Hydro is an aluminum giant hit by the Locker Goga ransomware. The entire global network went down, their production lines uh, stopped. So basically their board made a swift, decisive decision. We're not gonna pay. You're not gonna be what happened next. 
the company basically switched massive aluminium smelting plants into manual operations, which means he were talking about workers using paper, pencil, faxes to restore operations. And honestly, they brought even retired engineers who remembered how things used to work before automation. These guys held daily press conferences to communicate what is happening and what they are doing and to be as much transparent as possible, especially with their clients. They were seen as maybe sour heroes for their resilience. This sounds noble, right? However, let's talk about the cost of this decision. The financial impact was estimated over $70 million in the first few months alone. And total costs ran much, much higher. It took them basically months to return to normal IT operations, which makes me actually beg the question. If you are a SaaS provider, financial technology company, or digital forensics firm, you cannot basically switch to ma manual labor, right? Paper and pencil. Because, well, the product here, your product is the network. Uh, so uh, shutting down basically is a total amputation. So what are we going to do in this case? Well, the solution to this dilemma is not a binary choice here. You're going to have to authorize a parallel, uh, two parallel work streams simultaneously. One, hire a professional uh, negotiator. The professional negotiator could be uh, a company or a firm specialized in ransomware investigation. Okay. And this company, their basic goal here is not to pay the uh, attackers, right? Their goal is to stall the attackers, right? Maybe even try to get a proof of life, like uh, asking the attackers to decrypt a few samples to prove exactly, like in fact, they have the right keys, right? And maybe even you might try to talk them down from $15 million to $5 million. Again, your goal is not to pay. Your goal is to buy some time so you figure out the answer to the next work stream. The next work stream is to sit down with your technical team and ask them the question, which is, do we actually have viable backups that we can use to restore business operations? Backups that are not infected, that's, that's the question. And that requires your team to dig deeper into the network to find out when was the first initial access uh, the attackers actually had on your network, right? Because you should count the time from the first initial infection, not when, not from when the uh, you noticed the ransomware. Uh, so basically, that's where uh, most companies fail, I believe, because they think they have viable backups and they take like 90 days to deploy them enterprise-wide. Uh, later, they discover that some systems are still not healthy enough to operate. So we come back to the same question. The decision to pay or not to pay should basically uh, be clear uh, or should be made usually around day three or four from the infection or from the day you notice the infection. So pay only if the cost of downtime vastly exceeds the ransom plus the legal risks and your technical team confirms backups are destroyed or will take too long to restore to save the business. And of course, don't forget that legal counsel confirms you're not paying a sanctioned entity. And don't pay if you have a verified uh, evidence from your technical team that you have immutable healthy backups that you can restore uh, for a timeline that your business can withstand. Okay guys, that was my take on this. Let me know guys what you think in the comments and I will see you later.